omnibus bill that would have the nonprofit corporations subsidizing state government? Yes, um, what we decided to do was to give citizens uh, the opportunity to contribute to a nonprofit entity uh, uh, that would enable them to support something that they thought was a worthy cause that we simply did not have sufficient state revenue to support. Uh, I'll give you a case in point. Um, we have been concerned about uh, some of the slow decisions coming out of our regulatory agencies. Uh, not, I don't say that to be critical of our agencies, but simply because of the, the nature of the, of the paperwork and the legal requirements and the regulatory requirements. And so, uh, on a few occasions, we've been able to have what's called the Kaizen uh, 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 system uh, applied to a particular problem. Uh, and our, our conclusions were that using that system, we were able to uh, shorten uh, the decision making uh, to make it a more efficient process and some in the business community appreciated that and uh, expressed to us uh, their willingness to even contribute uh, resources that would make it more likely that we would be able to implement the Kaizen process more often and uh, so that's just one example we went to the ethics committee we laid out exactly what the proposal was uh, and the Ethics Committee uh, signed off on, on, onto our plan. Um, any resources that were collected or would be collected uh, would be uh, very transparent. All contributors would be reported in a very public and transparent way. And the resources would be audited. And uh, no resources could be either accepted or expended into that account without the director's uh, uh, okay and, and, uh, and sign off on it. So this is just a way to give uh, citizens a, an avenue to contribute to something. For example, another example might be uh, our state parks. Um, some people care very deeply about our state parks, would like to see certain things done in our state parks in terms of uh, enhancements or, or uh, maintenance that we may not be able to afford right now. This would give such persons um, uh, an avenue where they could make a contribution to try to accomplish uh, th those uh, positive outcomes, which we simply do not have the resources right now to pay for it. And in your mind, how, how were you able to overcome with the critics' voice, and that is, this opens the door for ethical mischief, that these, these nonprofits could unduly influence the workings of state government? Well, you know, I suppose whatever we were to try to do, there may be critics. And let me say, um, the only way to uh, keep unethical things from happening is to have ethical people in charge. And um, so I think we have ethical people in charge. And as I said, we went to the ethics committee and we laid out for them what we were planning to do and got their sign off on this. And we think there are sufficient safeguards built into what we're doing to prevent any any uh, conflict of interest or, or mischief when it comes to the use of these resources. Thank you. Governor, Governor, the one more question. Given the uncertainty over the revenue estimates this year and the biennial budget, now, yes. do you think the Republicans have a point in suggesting a, a one-year budget instead of trying to guess what it's going to be two years out? Would you oppose that? Okay. Uh, I, see, I see no benefit to having a one-year budget. If someone can give me uh, a rationale as to why that would be uh, helpful or beneficial, but I see no no real benefit from having a, a one-year budget. And to my knowledge, Ohio has never had uh, a one-year budget. Uh, and I think having a two-year budget um, with the ability to do what we've had to do in the current two-year budget and uh, budgets, and that is to make periodic uh, uh, reevaluations of it. Uh, I mean, quite frankly, over the last over the last uh, biennial budget, we have uh, we've made. Uh, uh, new forecasts every few months, and there's no reason why that could not continue uh, during a second two-year budget. What makes you think they're any more reliable in the next two years than they were the planning? Um, well, uh, 
uh, I, you know, I don't know uh, because, as I've said to you before, I'm not a prophet. But I, but I, but I can tell you that our uh, budget estimators, I think, have done um, uh, a credible job uh, when compared with budget estimates and forecasts that have been made by some of the leading corporations and corporate analysts in this country and in our state. Uh, the fact is that this economy is in a volatile situation, and we all know that. That is not a surprise to anyone. Uh, thankfully, there appear to be some embryonic signs that uh, the national economy is starting to show indications of recovery. I hope that's the case, um, but we will do in the next biennial budget what we have done in the current budget, and that is monitor the situations very closely and make changes as needed. Governor, a lot of school levies failed yesterday. Where do we stand on school funding reform for the state? Well, what I have said that um, this is a critical time uh, in Ohio's history when it comes to uh, my school plan. Uh, I have said that uh, if we lose this moment, if we lose this moment in time, when we have such such broad-based support for this plan, every uh, major stakeholder group uh, is supporting the plan. They think it's a good idea. Um, uh, if we if we lose this moment, we will have failed our state. We will have shown timidity in the face of challenge, and I believe we will have sinned against our children. You staked your first term on the success of getting this passed. Where does that? Where do you feel you stand? Well, I am fighting to uh, to get this plan passed in the law, and ultimately the people of Ohio will determine whether or not I have fought sufficiently hard for the kids. Governor, there's there's mental health advocates across the street today sure. asking for more money in the state budget. Given yesterday's news, do re, do expectations need to be reset here? Um, I have managed this budget uh, and the resources available to the state uh, in the ways that I think are most defensible and. If uh, those who uh, may take issue with my decisions want to come with me, sit down at a table in my office, share with me what they would have done differently or what they think I should do differently, I, I have an open door and uh, I am uh, perfectly willing, in fact anxious, to hear from those who would have made or uh, would have me make different decisions that I've made. When the need increases and when the resources diminish um, because of the nature of our Constitution and my requirement, and by the way, that requirement is shared by the legislature to maintain a balanced budget, I have laid out my priorities. If someone has uh, a different set of priorities and they want to bring them to me, and try to convince me otherwise my door is open. But I think I have focused on the most important thing for the future of Ohio, and that is educating our children and enabling them to have the kind of skill development and educational opportunities so that they can compete. If Ohio's economy is going to have a rebound, it is only going to happen as we educate and prepare our children. Governor, you said